general relativity step by step. We've got a fundamental tensor here, a metric tensor, GIJ, in a particular coordinate system. Uh, and what I want to do is to express it in another coordinate system, in a barred coordinate system. So let's just have a think about that. The definition of it is delta S squared equals sigma over i and j, g i j, delta x i, delta x j. But in the barred coordinate system, I'm going to try and uh, not write the, the, the summation. In the barred coordinate system, we've got g i j bar, delta x bar i, delta x bar j. So I'm just going to fool around with this. Um, now you'll notice that the, both of these are summed over i and j, uh, but that's a dummy index. I've called it i and j. Uh, I can call it anything. So I can call it uh, bar i j k l, let's say, delta x bar k, delta x bar l. And this is again ds squared. All these things are equal to all these different lines are equal to one another. So, having a look at delta x bar k, that's just equal to di x bar k by di x, let's say i, delta x i, summed over i, and delta x bar l equals, by a pure analogy, where I wrote k here and here, I'm just going to write l here, l, here and here, and when I wrote i here, I'm going to write j, summed of course, delta x j. So that's just the total derivative law. So what does this one look like here? Let's just have a think about that. Uh, that's delta s squared equals g bar k l, just copying from here, delta x bar k, delta x bar l equals g bar k l, uh, from here, di x bar k by di x i, delta x i, this thing being delta x bar k times uh, this term here, di x bar l by di x j, delta x j, this term here being delta x bar L. Okay, so that equals G bar K L di X bar K by di X I di X bar L by di X J delta X I delta X J. And that's di S squared. And in the unbarred coordinate system, we had this. Delta x i, delta x j, summed over i j. So these these two these two expressions here are the same thing. They're just the distance element squared represented in two different uh, coordinate systems, or with different uh, metric tensors at least. So we have g i j, delta x i, delta x j equals that's this one equals this thing here, g bar k l, and I'm just going to copy this lot here. I'm going to bracket it slightly differently. Di x bar k by di x i, di x bar l, di x j, times the uh, infinitesimal elements here. Now at this point you say to yourself, all oh, right, um, we can just cancel delta i and delta j, not so fast. You can't just cancel the delta, you can't just, I was talking about cancelling uh, cancelling that with this, but that that doesn't work. Let's see if I can get rid of those. There we go. That doesn't work because it's summed over i and j, and you, it, it's easy to forget this when you're writing down equations that um, uh, both the left and the right are summed over i and j, and cunningly it's the same the same summation on either side. I'm going to write it down in a slightly different format: g i j minus in brackets g bar k l di x bar k by di x i, di x bar l by di x j, uh, delta x i, delta x j equals zero for all delta x. Um, now if you write it down like that, this thing here is just a matrix, m i j, it's not really a matrix, because a matrix is 
uh, got one up and one down, but it's the same idea. Uh, we can actually express this in terms of matrix uh, algebra. Uh, if this is M, we've effectively got that equals zero, where that's the matrix M. This thing here is delta X as a, as a vector, and this is delta X transpose. Yeah, if well, what we're doing here is we're saying delta x as a as a as a vector is delta x one, delta x two, all the way up to delta x n. It's just an n-dimensional vector there. Sorry, I'll just uh, make that a two. Okay, so uh, we've got this nice little equation: delta x transpose as a vector times a matrix M times delta x equals zero for all delta x. Well, instead of writing a delta, it's not a first order equation. This is a this is a, a, a an exact equation. So I'm just going to call it v. V transpose m v equals zero for all vectors v. It's not entirely obvious that this is. Um, uh, it's not entirely obvious what's going to go on until you remember that m is symmetric. It's symmetric for, uh, and well, even that's not entirely obvious. It's symmetric because both metric tensors are symmetric, and also this is a product. Uh, and if you interchange the k and the l, uh, this term uh, is unaltered as well. So the matrix M is is symmetric. Uh, and if it's symmetric, it means it's diagonalizable. Diagonalizable. So we can express M as a q transpose dq where q is the matrix of the eigenvectors and we can choose an orthonormal set so that's got full rank so it's invertible this thing here is diagonal and these things here are invertible it's a long time since i've done matrix uh, vertible so we can express M in terms of these these rather peculiar things here. And so if I've got V transpose V, so V transpose V equals zero, I can write that as V transpose Q transpose D Q uh, V equals zero. And of course I'm going to bracket it like that. This is for all V. Well, that's a vector matrix matrix matrix. Right. This is diagonal. And so I'll write Q V equals W, let's say. So for all W, oops, uh, for all W, matrix W, we've got W transpose D for diagonal uh, W equals zero. So what that means is that sigma W I squared D I equals zero for all W which basically says that di equals zero for all i. So the diagonal matrix that happens when you di that uh, you get when you diagonalize m matrix m is zero. And so that means that matrix m here is zero. And that means that this thing here is zero. So I'll write it out in its full glory. That says that gij equals g, sorry, minus, uh, minus, I'm just copying off here, G bar K L di X bar K by di X I di X bar L by di X J is identically equal to zero. And that of course means that G I J equals G K L bar di X bar K by di X I di x bar l by di x j. And so this is our transformation law for the metric tensor that takes us between an unbarred coordinate system and we can express the metric tensor in the barred coordinate system. I want you to note again that nothing I've said up to now depends upon the space being flat in any sense. It works on curved spaces. Everything I've said works on curved spaces. Uh, we'll go into that in a bit more detail later on in the course, but right now, 
we've got this nice transformation law between the metric tensor in different coordinate systems. And I'll give you examples of this later on. But for the moment, I'm going to stop there.